Hey everyone, we're back, and today we have something a little bit different for you guys. We're well into the new year, and hopefully you're all making good on your resolutions for 2021. It can be hard to figure out the best way to break out of our comfort zones and force ourselves to try something new, and sometimes just saying out loud the things we want to change isn't enough. For me, it helps to bridge the gap between what I know and what I'm hesitant to learn by seeking inspiration from things that I enjoy, namely video games. I think we can all relate to that feeling of enthusiasm that rushes through us when we play a game that we really enjoy. Whether it's from the competition, the challenges we overcome, or the art that makes up the visuals of a game, there's so much to be gained from taking a little time out of your schedule to indulge in your hobbies. Not many people would describe League of Legends in this way, but for me, this game has provided me with an excellent way to achieve one of my New Year's resolutions. Now, before I dive into exactly what it is that I'll be sharing with you guys today, let me just briefly explain what my goal is for my artwork in 2021. If you're already familiar with my work, you probably know just how much I like line work. Most, if not all, of my character design is expressed through clean, sharp lines filled in like a coloring book. There's nothing wrong with this, and I still like the way a lot of my old stuff looks. But in this coming year, I'd like to try some new rendering methods that utilize different brush types and technical skills. How does any of this relate to League of Legends? Well, I thought it would be a fun exercise for me if I tried my hand at creating some skin designs for existing League of Legends champions and try my best to replicate the style of painting that the artists at Riot used to develop concepts that can then be rendered as 3D models in-game. It was a good way to meet in the middle between something I love, League, and something I didn't really want to do, break out of my comfort zone as an artist. Now, let's talk a little bit about how Riot designs skins for their champions. Like in any game with cosmetic modifications, skins in League of Legends allow players to enjoy a different depiction of their favorite character that explores alternative character design choices that play off of their original look. These looks can be consistent with their existing personalities, contrast their character completely, or explore different visual themes using that character's silhouette and gameplay abilities. For the past few years, League of Legends has gotten super immersed in creating alternative universes with their skins, creating entire skin lines that tell a story using unique designs for familiar characters. Some of these skin lines include the Star Guardians, Elderwood, and the Infernals. One of my personal favorites is the Dark Star and Cosmic skin lines, two sets of skins existing in the same universe. Ancient, all-powerful beings that consume entire galaxies, and the protectors of the universe that use their cosmic might to fight off the darkness. To stay consistent with what I consider to be a really compelling method of alternative character design, I wanted to create my own skin line with a unique theme that I could apply to three separate characters. I know a few of you guys really miss my Apoctober story, and to be honest, I miss it too. I've actually been continuing to write and design for the story outside of the month of October, but for now, I thought I could merge some ideas with that world into this video. So, I came up with the idea for the Cult of the Abyss skin line. Taking inspiration from classic cosmic horror like H.P. Lovecraft, and specific visual themes for my Apoctober story. Of the over 150 existing League of Legends champions to choose from, the three I decided were most deserving of my fan design skins were Camille, Fiddlesticks, and Tom Kench. I'm partial to all three of these guys in their designs, some of my favorite character designs in this or any game. What's more, neither of these three champions received new skins in 2020, so I felt like they were really in need of some love. I started with Camille, a champion with a very iconic silhouette. Camille's character in her default skin is something like a steampunk cyborg cop. As her rigid stance and sharp lines might tell you, she's a very no-nonsense kind of lady. For Camille, there are only two sides to any argument, her way and the wrong way. Lawful good, perceptive, and domineering, even Camille's gameplay reflects her obsession with perfection, and it was going to be interesting transforming that sense of compulsive precision into an eldritch monstrosity that would fit into the skin line. My main source of visual inspiration for this skin was based off of my character Bonnie, an eldritch god with a personality quite contradictory to Camille, but with a physical build that could fit rather nicely over her silhouette. In the front view, I started with line work, but like I said in the beginning, forced myself to paint over it in order to get a better sense of shape and form without relying on my lines. The concept art that I did for this design included a two-point turnaround and a quick illustration of one of her abilities, 
which in most modern League of Legends skins also gets modified. I was a little disappointed in how it came out, not in the design itself, but in the rendering style. But I had plenty more time to practice with this method. After I finalized the design in a turnaround, I converted the character into a top-down rendering that I painted over an actual in-game model of Camille. If I was a real concept artist working for Riot, chances are they'd ask me to do this in order to facilitate the transition between a 2D sketch and a 3D model. I would probably also have to do a turnaround for this rendering as well, but I omitted that step for the sake of time. After all, I was doing three characters in less than a week. The next character I made a skin for was Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks is technically one of the oldest champions in the game, but it received a full visual and gameplay update in early 2020. Its new design is brilliant and has a ton of potential for skins. Fiddlesticks actually refers to the scarecrow host of an ancient demon of terror that has haunted the realm of Runeterra for ages. Being little more than an inanimate object brought to life by an eldritch, immaterial being, Fiddlesticks already fits in pretty well with my cosmic horror skin line. My concept for this design turned it into something more akin to a once living being that had been corrupted by the gods it worshipped. Hence, I gave this skin the name Cultist of the Abyss Fiddlesticks. I didn't do a turnaround for Fiddlesticks, because there really wasn't much on the backside of the character that I felt couldn't be inferred just from looking at the front. Instead, I included a close-up and more detailed rendering of his weapon. I was much happier with the way this painted design came out than with the Camille. I was tempted to just fill in the colors under my line work, but I forced myself to paint the whole figure from the bottom up, and I was very pleased with the results. Painting over this model proved a little bit more complicated than Camille's. Fiddlesticks has a somewhat anthropomorphic body, but because it's essentially a giant puppet, it moves and stands in very unnatural ways. If I didn't have the existing Fiddlesticks model to paint over, I'm not sure how I would be able to recreate that iconic new stance that the reworked Fiddlesticks has. Of the three painted models I did, however, I felt like this one came out the best.
The last character I chose for a skin in the Cult of the Abyss line was Tom Kench. Like Fiddlesticks, Tom is a demon of the world of Runeterra, taking on many names and forms throughout the fictional world's history. His most recognizable depiction and the one used in-game is that of a massive anthropomorphic catfish with a huge gut and an even bigger mouth. Tom's whole kit focuses around his mouth, which is more than just a set of jaws and frightening teeth. His gaping maw is actually a portal that can carry souls through the rivers of space and time, but all roads eventually lead to the bottomless pit of his stomach. Again, pretty much already an eldritch horror, and a shoe in for the skin line. In addition to changing colors and textures to match the other two Cult of the Abyss skins, I robbed Tom of everything that made him look remotely human. Eyes, clothes, even his mouth. I imagine the skin being a legendary, with custom animations that allow him to open his mouth four ways when he ults or uses his E or W. Like Camille, I felt it was important to include a two-point turnaround of this design, and while I broke out of my comfort zone in the painting of the front perspective, I used lines and flat colors to describe the back. What I was most pleased with in this piece was how I was able to capture depth in the mouth by layering colors and levels of saturation. Painting over Tom Kench's model was the most challenging. I was changing a lot about his design, and I really had to use my own sense of perspective to translate my frontward facing sketch into a top down rendition. Again, I was proud of myself for working with different brushes, but some part of it still ended up looking very safe to me. This was an exercise in trial and error for me. Coming up with concepts for things like League of Legends skins is easy, but executing them can often be a whole other story. I'm glad I was able to use this as an opportunity to break out of my shell a little bit, and I'm more or less satisfied with the end result, but let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, I'll consider continuing this series and make some more League of Legends skins. I might even make more for this skin line, and maybe add an opposing skin line that plays off of my characters like Celeste and the Cavalry. Also, what are some of your goals for 2021? I'm interested to hear what ideas you guys have for changing or improving your work this year, and how you plan on accomplishing those changes. Leave your resolutions down in the comments. Thanks for watching guys, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to follow us on Twitch. I was actually working on these skins live during my art streams, and it was a lot of fun talking with chat as I did so. Good luck in the coming year fellow artists, and I'll see you all in the next video.